Hey yo guys, I'm here to give you my uh, review, I guess, of the WWE Hall of Fame induction for the class of 2009. Uh, I thought that this year's Hall of Fame was uh, pretty good. I mean, definitely wasn't the same as um, in previous years, you know, more so due to the fact that everyone else in previous years, you know, really didn't have a clock put on them. Uh, they got to go free will and whatnot, which made it, you know, more exciting. Uh, just more so for like the stories that they would tell like you know you look at Sherry Martell you know Flair um, you know even you know Bret Hart uh, Bobby Keenan etc um, for everyone else that went in uh, in previous years you know Piper uh, but this year they, they didn't they limited the time you know they kind of policed it a lot did the WWE you know to, to one extent you know I was happy they, you know eliminated the cat calling because I thought that the cat calling and heckling, or not really heckling, but just shouting, and you know, for the fans that are trying to get themselves over it, really doesn't go that well. Especially last year when you had, you know, Rock go, you know, be able to take take forever due to the fact, you know, that he could have probably done in, you know, at least, you know, 15 to 20 minutes sooner if it hadn't been for the fans calling and chanting, and you know, I don't mind the chanting so much, but shouting at the Rock, I mean, it just I'm not a fan of that uh, whatsoever, but. Um, you know, when the fans wanted to chant at, you know, the, at Austin, you know, that happened, you know, they couldn't kick all those fans out, but, uh, overall, I thought, you know, the, the speeches, you know, some of them I wish would have gone longer, but, you know, the likes of, like, Coco, I thought was fine at, you know, the five minutes, but anyway, so, I'll give you my quick thoughts here, of course, the event was streamed live on WWE.com at 7, I gotta say, give them props, because, to me, this was the best year they've ever streamed it. Um, in previous years, you know, it had been laggy and whatnot, uh, especially last year. Um, it would, you know, be going good and then it would stop and whatnot. That's more so because they would, you know, you'd click the stream link and it would load up your uh, Windows Media Player if you had that. But this year they had their own little window going, which I thought was great. And, you know, it played perfectly. No lag whatsoever. Fantastic stuff from WWE. Um, anyway, so the first people that came out were Dusty Rose to induct the Funks. Um, you know, Dusty put over the fact, you know, how legendary these guys are in Japan and that, you know, Dory Funk's such a great soft-spoken guy and that, uh, Terry Funk and him have this rivalry where Terry, you know, calls him an old, an old uh, egg-sucking dog and whatnot. Um, anyways, then, you know, you had Dory come out and get straight into it and, you know, he gave a nice little speech saying that, you know, he liked to, he likes working with the young talent, you know, likes the, everyone that he worked with and thanked them for help from getting him over. And he put over uh, Kejimoto from uh, President of All Japan for wrestling, which I just thought that was awesome. Um, and, uh, you know, makes you wonder if maybe, hopefully, I don't, maybe this is just me being, I don't know, crazy or whatnot, but maybe WWE All Japan could get a working agreement or something. I think it would be great because, you know, a lot of the developmental talent need a lot of work, and I think a trip to Japan is something that's going to be great, with the exception of, you know, the likes of Loki uh, or Kaval now. But anyways, um, then, you know, Dory was, as usual, soft-spoken and whatnot, but then you had Terry, who was just awesome, and, you know, yelling and hollering and stuff. It was just, you know, great Terry Funk stuff. Um, he said, you know, he'd no longer call and Dusty an egg-sucking dog for that great speech he gave him. Um, and then, you know, he basically said that, you know, when he passes, that there's going to be a, a battle roll that goes on forever, and that when everyone's in heaven, you know, every seat's front row, and when I was just a nice little speech, wish it would have gone on longer, the music sort of played him off, like, you know, at the Oscars or whatnot, so I didn't, I wasn't a fan of that, but, uh, whatever, you know, Terry cut a nice little, pro, uh, speech, uh, was soft-spoken and whatnot, but Dory was Dory, as usual, and Terry was Terry, so that's what I expected, um, then we had Coco B, where he cut a nice little speech. Uh, Honky Top Man inducted him, and Honky, I don't know, for some reason Honky seemed out of place. I mean, maybe it was just me from seeing a lot of Honky shoot interviews, but it was weird watching him talk nice about someone. Um, I'm not sure if he truly feels this way about Coco, but, you know, he said some nice things that, you know, Coco, you know, trained together in this uh, barn, I believe in Tennessee, and, you know, Honky learned how to take the drop kick. Uh, from Coco without really learning he just stood there and took it so uh, it was still cool to see uh, Honky we'll probably see him in the Hall of Fame next year but uh, anyways so then Coco he was you know short and sweet because he, he was up to the five minutes and you know he was fine at five minutes I mean his speech was more of the his uh, his second third bird I believe this may be a second bird as Frankie trying to you know steal the show and like eat 
uh, his speech or, you know, just horse around. It was it was funny uh, for what it was. Uh, Coco, you know, he was fine for whatever he said. that you know, He was thankful of all the fans and, you know, everyone that helped there. And he was thankful of the WWE, which, you know, a lot of people are, uh, you know, trying to mend good fences and potentially, you know, keep working. I mean, Coco's always had, you know, a weird on and off relationship. He got, you know, uh, in a big argument in England with one of the WWE agents back in, I believe, early the early 90s, I'm going to just say. And, you know, the agent got fired, and eventually Coco got fired, and Coco was brought back as, you know, in high energy, whatnot, and then he was, you know, a jobber, and, you know, he made that one appearance back in 98 as the Blue Blazer. Um, but, yeah, I mean, whatever. I think Coco may make some other appearances and whatnot. I mean, he came back for, the, you know, when WWE was in Houston for when they came back for that homecoming show. Um, but yeah, he'll probably make some more appearances. Then we had Howard Finkel, who was next. Um, mean Gene inducted him, and Mean Gene, Mean Gene was just funny at the beginning. He said that you know, Howard, uh, you know, I'm inducting Howard Finkel, a man who's world. He said something like a person that's world renowned, and everyone knows who it is. And he's like, well, that's enough about me. I just thought that was pretty funny. Um, but then Finkel came out. You know, he was. You could tell he was excited because you know Howard Finkel's been you know, on the list of people being into the Hall of Fame for, you know, years and whatnot, but he's been passed over. Uh, but, you know, he's a guy that for this, for that company, absolutely truly deserves to be into this Hall of Fame or whatever you want to call it. Um, and he came out, you could tell he was just so excited. He came out to wave to the fan, like, the, the way the stage was set up, it was kind of like a nice platform, but then it, like, dipped off, and he got too close to it, almost fell right on his ass. That would have just been the most embarrassing thing ever. Um, but, you know, Howard's speech was awesome. I mean, he basically, you know, was doing it in his uh, ring announcer voice, like, I am now a new WWE inductee into the 2009 class of the Hall of Fame. Basically stuff of that nature. Um, but, yeah, I enjoyed Howard. I mean, Howard's, you know, someone that's served to be in there forever. He's definitely one of the top ring announcers as a whole, not just wrestling ring announcers, ring announcers as a whole. I mean, I mean, I like Howard. I mean, his voice is on so much stuff from my childhood. I mean, you know, as a, a kid, you know, I'd be, you know, around my, in, somewhere in my house just, you know, conducting, you know, when Brett would win, a, you know, would regain a title match or mainly his stuff from, uh, you know, matches where the title was uh, retained by a disqualification. Still, WWF champion and stuff like that. I just enjoy that. Uh, Howard was just great. Then we had Michael Hayes come up to induct the Von Erics. I mean, Hayes could have done a little bit more. I like Hayes, but I just wish... I just... Something to me was missing. I mean, I'm a big fan of Michael Hayes. Something could have... I liked what he said and whatnot. You could tell he really meant it. Um, you know, there was a nice embrace when Kevin Von Erich came out. Um, you know, you could tell this meant a lot to Michael Hayes uh, to be able to induct uh, the Von Erics as a whole. Um, yeah, I just really enjoyed it. And then Kevin came out. And, you know, Kevin, while his speech may not have been the best of the night, I enjoyed it. Uh, it was definitely a thorough one. Um, I mean, when he's, I don't know, it was just me, but when he said that I wish my family and brothers were here, you know, a little small tear ran down my eye. I don't know what it was, just, I guess maybe it was me envisioning them all being there to accept this and whatnot, but, you know, and then Kevin said that, you know, that we're all brothers and whatnot, like every person in the wrestling business, they're all brothers and whatnot. T talking about a story of when, you know, uh, Kerry just passed away and he had to do a tour of Africa and he really didn't want to go, but, you know, everyone was there to console him. So that was just great. Kevin kept it nice and sweet. I really wish Kevin could have gone a little bit longer. You know, he talked about his kids. I don't know if his kids are going to get into the wrestling business or not. I don't know if Kevin would want them to, but, you know, Kevin said in the past interviews, you know, more so around 93 when his, you know, career was just about to be done in his retirement run, that, you know, if they want to do it, he has no problem with them. Like, I have a lot of people in the business that are, have been in it, and, you know, they have kids. They don't really want them to do it, but if they want to do it, they're, you know, they have no right to stop them. Just like any person, you know, if your kid want to do something, you have no right to stop them. I mean, it's their dream. you got to let them live their life. Um, I just, yeah, I just wish Kevin had more time to tell some more s great stories about, you know, the, you know, Fritz, Kevin... Or, excuse me, Fritz, David, uh, Kerry, and all the other Von Erics. Just some other good stories and whatnot. Then you had Jim Ross come out and duct uh, Bill Watts. This was just, you know, great stuff. Bill, to me, was probably one of the top speeches of the night. I put it right up there with speech of the night. I mean, it was, you know, kept short because the WWE wanted to, you know, cut it short so they could have time to do the final inductees uh, and so they could edit so it could go air on USA. 
Uh, but, you know, Bill was just like, nah, I'm going to go off on my own and I'm just going to talk about whatever. I know he talked about, you know, his getting his big breaks with, you know, getting toured around by a guy, uh, I can't remember the name, I apologize for that, but uh, who wrote for the Pittsburgh uh, Gazette and, you know, followed uh, Bill Watts around when he, Bill was a, a pretty big heel in the business. You know, he talked about his, you know, true friends, like, you know, the big catering lad, and, you know, he shout, gave a shout out to Ron Simmons and said, you know, how proud he was when he won the WCW Championship over Vader and back in Baltimore. Um, really, just Bill was just great. I mean, it was, uh, a lot of people have said this, and I truly agree. It was just like a Bill Watts shoot interview, but condensed. Uh, I mean, Bill is just a great person to hear talk. I mean, I mean, the last thing I heard before this was him on the WWE 24-7 talking about the African Americans and whatnot. So, uh, th thing they did for Black History Month on WWE 24-7. I just enjoyed that thoroughly. I mean, Bill, Bill did a great job, I mean, talking about, you know, working Bruno and whatnot, that they had, you know, some great box office matches and that, you know, everyone, you know, he and Bruno could bench press so strong. Just some great stuff. Uh, Bill was definitely like, then you had Flair uh, come out. This is obviously on USA, so it was a little edited, but to me, the best part of the whole thing was Ricky Steamboat. That's just my personal opinion. I thought Steamboat was awesome, and it, it was sucked that it was edited because you could tell... All the pans they did to the crowd was stuff was that aired on WWE.com, uh, and they just, you know, cut and pe uh, pieced it together and whatnot, which I wasn't that big of a fan of, but uh, the way they presented, you know, Steamboat's speech, it was great. You could tell this really meant a lot to Steamboat. I mean, he broke down as soon as he came out, kind of like Flair from last year. I mean, Flair and Steamboat then hugged, and they pretended like they were going to, you know, go into a collar and elbow tie-up. Uh, that was just awesome. Um, you know, Steamboat said a great thing that, you know, he loves the, you know, the fact that people like to take his, you know, opinion on watching matches and stuff, and that, you know, he enjoys being an agent and whatnot. I thought Steamboat was fantastic. Um, really, the one thing I kind of didn't like was the fact that he told Jericho that you better be ready, and I had to keep it all kayfabe and stuff. I wasn't a fan of that, because you know Jericho was marking out at I'd Heart, uh, seeing, you know, one of his favorite wrestlers of all time go into the Hall of Fame. Uh, but Steamboat to me was the best part of this whole thing. Really, I'm uh, like to see all of it on the, you know, definitely well on the DVD. Uh, I mean, him and Rick, Rick said some great stuff. You know, following up on what Kevin said about uh, everyone being brothers and whatnot. Um, and then we had Vince come out and induct Stone Cold Steve Austin, basically saying that you know he's the biggest superstar we've ever had. Uh, talking about you know more of the moments that happened on television, but you know it's really true that. Austin was the guy that turned the company around. Uh, you know, every every week they basically tried. You know, up until they realized that the direction should be Austin with edgy heel, of uh, edgy face, I should say. You know, basically he was doing heel stuff, but the pe people loved it. You know, they tried everything to make him such a badass, and it just got him more uh, baby face over. So that's just what you know he talked about. Austin then came out and he buried Men's Warehouse, which was just hysterical. Uh, we thought that, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, but then he basically said that, you know, he could really tell that Austin is um, really considering uh, being done with wrestling. He wants to do m movies and whatnot. And, you know, he at least he only got to say goodbye if this is his goodbye. He may make some more appearances on TV. I don't know. Uh, but whatnot. Uh, I really thought Austin did a good job. Uh, definitely, you know, may end up in the best speech of the night. But, you know, after Austin gave his, you know, you know goodbye or whatnot, his speech, you know, he basically... Uh, went away from the notes, which is something I kind of like. He better when you go, come from your heart, uh, more so than just relying on your notes and reading word for word. Uh, you know, Dory did that, but uh, I was fine with Dory doing it. Um, Dory wanted to, you know, make sure he nailed all these points. Austin just wanted to wing it. That's what Bill Watts did, and that's why Bills was so great. And that's the person Austin is. Austin, you can tell, is the person that loves to spout out off the uh, from the mouth. So that was great. And then at the end, when they had the confetti going, Austin had a beer and he took a sip, and then he passed one to pass the basically saying he's passing the torch to Cena, so it's up to Cena to now carry the company, so uh, that's where uh, we should be, and yeah, so overall the Hall of Fame was good. It wasn't as good as previous years, more so, like I said, because of the, you know, the editing and, you know, the fact that they wanted to limit the time the guys got to speak, which kind of took away some of the greatness, but really, um, you know, when you, you saw the whole view, I mean, they really, you know, a lot of people have said this, and I think... You know, when they did the stuff at, like, uh, in Chicago or in Detroit, you know, at a theater house or something like that, that's better than an arena. 
Like, I don't think you should be doing these things at arenas. You know, I, arenas don't have that great setting. I mean, a nice theater house, you know, the Fox Theater when they did it for WrestleMania 23 weekend, had that great, you know, feel where everyone was close and whatnot, you know. Um, yeah, I mean... Uh, it was just pretty good. I mean, at least we didn't hear any... The, the, the WWE was pretty Im important on, you know, enforcing the security. and Or not security, but the cat calling and shouting out. I thought that was, you know, smart that they did that. Because to me, it just takes away from, you know, someone trying to cut a great speech. I mean, when you look at uh, Mr. Perfect's speech, you know, some fans are calling out at the wrong moments and whatnot. I mean, it's not about you. It's about the performers that have, you know, come through and whatnot. So my opinion there. It was nice to see that some of the people that, you know, are from this community, you know, dressed up properly. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. Can you not wear a t-shirt and shorts to this? This is a clearly classy event. I mean, hell, even a shirt like this is fine. Uh, you mean, you may not even need, you don't even really need a tie. I would pass you on a shirt like this. Um, but yeah, they definitely need to class it up a bit more. Uh, that's my opinion. But anyways, that's me. I'm out. Be back tomorrow with the review of the big one. Uh, but yeah, anyways, that's it for me. I'm out. Peace.